You're listening to episode number 61 of the Keto Diet Podcast. Today, we're chatting about practicing keto without a thyroid, alcohol on keto, medications and supplements for the thyroid, supporting a loved one through disease, and so much more. So stay tuned. Hey, I'm Leanne from healthfulpursuit.com, and this is the Keto Diet Podcast. Keto is a low-carb, high-fat diet where we're switching from a sugar-burning state to becoming fat-burning machines. Starting keto and maintaining it long-term can be quite a challenge if you don't feel supported. My 60-day program, The Keto Bundle, provides you with clear step-by-step how-to on successfully adapting to a ketogenic diet, avoiding common ketogenic struggles, and healing your body completely and fully with a ketogenic diet. Go to healthfulpursuit.com slash bundle and use the coupon code podcast, all in caps, no spaces, to get 10% off your order, exclusive for podcast listeners only. Now, let's get this party started. Hey guys, happy Sunday. The show notes and full transcript for today's episode can be found at healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E61. The transcript is added to the post about three to five days following the initial air date of this episode. And let's hear from one of our awesome partners. The podcast is partnered with Keto Collagen, a blend of collagen and MCT oil powder created by our friends at Perfect Keto. Each scoop of Keto Collagen has 5 grams of MCT oil powder and 10 grams of USA-raised grass-fed collagen, sweetened with stevia with a little cacao powder sprinkled in. The collagen supports connective tissue, ligament, tendons, skin, hair, and nail health, while the MCT oil powder boosts mental performance, increases fat-burning potential, increases satiety, and boosts your fat intake for the day. Keto collagen is great added to your daily coffee and is a fabulous travel companion. You can use the coupon code HEALTHFUL, all in caps, no spaces, for 15% off keto collagen at healthfulpursuit.com slash collagen. Unsure of the link? Simply check out the show notes of today's episode to get all of the details. If you have an idea for a podcast episode or you want to submit praise over and above the review, which you can leave by going to healthfulpursuit.com slash review, you can reach me at info at keto diet podcast.com. I got three quick announcements for you and one is super exciting and as a complete podcast exclusive, you won't find this anywhere else. Cyber Monday is tomorrow, November 27th. The internet is going to be filled with awesome coupon codes for you to use on some of your favorite products. And we thought what better time to release Cyber Monday than to our podcast listeners a day early. So if you've been with Healthful Pursuit for a while, you know, we love Cyber Monday around here. Now you don't have to wait until tomorrow to enjoy ridiculous keto savings. We are starting the savings party early, like right now. So if you go to healthfulpursuit.com slash shop and you pick any of my digital products, any of them, you add them to your cart and you use the coupon code CYBER, that's all in caps, C-Y-B-E-R, you will get 40% off your entire purchase. It's going to start today, November 26th at 12 a.m. Eastern to Monday, November 27th at 11.59 Eastern. It will end at that time. There won't be any extensions. So please, if you are thinking about getting any of my digital products, so this will include all my digital products, not the keto diet paperback because I have no control over selling that or anything, but you can get the keto bundle, balanced keto meal plans and beyond. So this coupon code is limited to a thousand uses. So you need to get your order in before it goes to the public. So again, that's cyber all in caps for 40% off. So I hope you enjoy it. Second announcement is that the content that we're sharing on the episode today can be triggering for some that may have dealt with depression in the past or anxiety. So if you have and you're triggered by conversations around that nature, I would just avoid this episode. And the third announcement is that if you're curious about more thyroid type of episodes and you want to hear more about keto and thyroid, I've done a couple of episodes in the past. They are episodes 15 and 51. Take a look at those in your podcast player, or you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E 
15 or healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E51. Okay, today's guest is Tiffany Marr. She's a keto lifestyle and gym enthusiast, as well as an operator at DC Water and Sewer Authority. She lives in Stratford, Virginia with her Shetland sheepdog, Temperance. After suffering with two thyroid diseases since the age of 18 and then developing thyroid cancer, Tiffany is on a mission to not just live without a thyroid, but thrive. I had the chance to meet Tiffany on the book tour when I was in Virginia, and she is the most energetic, fun loving human. She was smiling the entire time. The entire time I was talking for like an hour and a half, she was like bright eyed and bushy tailed. And she just had such a zest for life that when she shared her story, I was amazed at what she had been through. And she was sitting there being so happy and just in love with life. So without further ado, let's cut over to this interview because it is awesome. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program. Hey, Tiffany, how's it going? I'm good, Leanne. How are you? I'm so good. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is this is a huge honor for me. So I really appreciate it. Oh, likewise. Thanks so much. And for people that may not be familiar with you, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Oh, sure. So, hi, I'm Tiffany. I live in Virginia, about 45 minutes south of D.C., and I've lived here my entire life. I went to college here, and uh, I went to Sweetbriar College in Southern Virginia. I major in environmental science, and currently I'm living in Stafford, Virginia, um, so pretty close to D.C. I'm an operator at D.C. Water, and it's a shift work job, and I mention that because, you know, shift work is no joke when it comes to your health, just not sleeping like a normal person. So, yeah, I mean, I guess the biggest thing most people talk to me about is, you know, hormone problems, especially thyroid things. You know, at 18, I was diagnosed with my first thyroid disease, grave disease, which led to being hypothyroid and then later developing thyroid cancer. So, I guess... I like to say my mission in life is to live a fulfilled life, you know, with with no thyroid. So, and how was that first diagnosis? Like I know when I was diagnosed with my first ailment, it was sort of like, what is this? Did you have those questions of like what is my thyroid? Why is this happening? What was that process like for you? It was honestly it was kind of terrifying. I'm not going to lie. I mean, when you're 18 and You know, this is actually my first doctor's appointment. I went um, by myself. You know, my parents had to work. It was right after I got out of high school and it was during the summer and I had to just get a regular physical for college. And I went in and I thought it was just going to be another physical, nothing major, you know, half hour in and then I go home and, um, you know, I was sitting in in the room and my primary care doctor at the time came in and. Uh, he asked me the usual questions. How are you? And did I examine stuff like that? And then, you know, they I don't know if you guys do this, too, but he had like a big glass of water. He's like, here you go. Take a, you know, take a big swig. And he had his you know thumbs pressed up against my throat, which at the time I didn't know why he was doing that. And he's like, he kind of had this look on his face and he's like, can you do that again? And I did. And without saying anything, he just walked out of the room. No. And yeah, and then probably like 10 minutes later, he walked in. He's like, okay, so here's the thing. You have a very large lump on your thyroid. And of course, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. (laughs) And I'm just being honest. And um, he's like, you have a very large lump on your thyroid. Um, I need to send you to this place and you're going to get an ultrasound and a biopsy. You have Graves disease. I was like, what? (laughs) I mean, to hear that at 18, I, I didn't. Honestly, until probably the last couple years, I didn't know what the thyroid was. And because I didn't know what it was, I didn't know how to care for it. So, I mean, it was just very overwhelming, you know, and I had to put my trust in my doctor that he was doing the right thing. But yeah, it was definitely terrifying. (laughs) 
Yeah, I bet. And to not even know what the thyroid is and how that process was. So then how did you end up? What was the process like to go to hypothyroidism and then thyroid cancer? What period of time was that, that you dealt with all of those things? So I was diagnosed with Graves' disease at 18. And then during the summer before I went to college. And I want to say it was probably like a month or so after that first appointment where I went in and did an ultrasound and they did a biopsy. I went and met an endocrinologist and she went ahead and ordered me radioactive iodine treatment, which for those that don't know, it's basically, it makes you hypothyroid. It's basically the destruction of your thyroid tissue. And so after that, consequently, that makes you hypothyroid. And so I lived with hypothyroidism for the better part of eight or nine years. And then probably a couple of months before I turned 27, I went in for my yearly checkup and I just really felt like something was off. I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, all of that, those symptoms and stuff that I had, but I went in, you know, just not feeling right. And my endocrinologist, she asked me how I was. And I told her, I was like, I don't know anymore. And she was like, that's not a good thing. What's wrong? And I started listing off all these crazy symptoms. And she goes, that's not normal, Tiffany. And so that day she, she ordered me an ultrasound and I went in and she called me a couple of days later. She's like, there's something there. We need to biopsy it ASAP. And honestly, Leanne, and I don't recommend this to anyone, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it immediately. I wasn't ready. I just, I knew something was wrong, but I wasn't emotionally stable to really handle what could, what it could be. And then a couple of months later when I was ready to deal with it, you know, I went in and I got my biopsy done. And two days later, I get a phone call at work. Um, it was my endocrinologist and she, she diagnosed me with thyroid cancer. So, I mean, I guess my, my thyroid uh, saga has been, you know, 10 years, I, but I live with hypothyroidism for the longest. And of course, now I no longer have a thyroid. And so they consider me hypothyroid still. So. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing journey. Amazing journey. And that you are quite, it sounds like you're happy and fulfilled. And I think that that is such a big deal because that is a huge experience to go through at such a young age too. You know, if you had to deal with something like this at like 50 or 60, I feel like you'd have, you'd be more equipped, but I mean, your first doctor's appointment to be able to go through all of this by yourself, huge deal. So where are you right now with your health? What What's happening right now? How are you eating? How are you feeling? So this is the crazy thing that no one told me until I discovered keto actually that you know my doctors told me not only my endocrinologist and my surgeon and um, they said you know you're always you're always going to be like this and what they meant was you're always going to be overweight you're always going to be depressed you're always going to have anxiety you know um, you're going to have brain fog and I, at first I kind of accepted it you know and, and that's because you I feel like a lot of us we just expect that we can trust our doctors and I'm not saying all doctors are bad. It's just, you know, we put so much trust in them that we don't go out and, and figure things out on our own, do our own research, talk to different people, get a second opinion and that sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, right now, everything's actually doing, I'm doing really well. All things considered, I've been uh, following the ketogenic diet, I'd say 85% of the time. I won't, you know, I'm not going to lie to anyone. I do have those those times where I want cheesecake and I eat it. And, you know, I, I know that when I eat this, I'm going to feel a certain way. So is it worth it? Yes. Is it worth it? No. You know, and then I kind of make that decision. But overall, you know, I, thanks to keto, and I've only been doing it seven months, but thanks to keto, I have excellent mental clarity. The brain fog has been lifted. I have crazy amounts of energy, which is awesome with the job that I have because, you know, I work 12 hour shifts and that's a long day for anybody, you know, and then even after work, I'll go to the gym sometimes. So to be able to have like a 15, 16 hour day and just like no mental crashes, no body crashes, it's fantastic. So right now everything's doing, I'm doing really well you know, and I have to thank keto for that. And honestly, I have to thank you for that because you were the first one that I really kind of discovered. And, you know, I went down the rabbit hole on your website and all your YouTube videos. And that's, I mean, that's what really got me started. So. 
Oh, I didn't know that. That's so awesome. I'm so yeah. happy to hear that. It's, and I think I mentioned this too on the book tour and things. It's like, it's so nourishing to hear people's stories and hear where they came from. And then hear that, you know, watching one of my YouTube videos brought them down the rabbit hole of keto mm-hmm. and they found other things. Like that's, that's why I do what I do. So that to me is just like, my heart is really happy right now. So thank you. <laughs> okay. um, what was your experience adapting? Like I'm assuming that uh, once your experience with thyroid cancer was over, you started keto or what was that transition like for adapting? Yeah. So I started keto this year um, at the end of April. So last year uh, I had thyroid cancer. I got diagnosed last March. I had surgery in May, um, actually the day before my birthday. So happy birthday to me. Uh, Yeah. It was kind of like a, I don't know. It was like a, like a Phoenix moment, you know, rising from the ashes kind of thing. Like I felt like I was born a new person. I know that sounds silly, but um, yeah. So the day before my birthday last year, I got my entire thyroid removed, 19 lymph nodes and the muscle in my neck where um, the cancer had spread. And, um, you know, from that point on until I guess January of this year, I just kind of was eating mostly... I'd say paleo is probably a good way of describing how I was eating, but still wasn't feeling right. You know, I still had the fog and I just had the body cramps and all those crazy symptoms. And uh, I guess in in January, I had a friend from high school was posting about being on keto. I'm like, what the heck is that? So I went to Google and then found you and then went down (laughs) that robot hole. And then I guess in in late April or May, I started, I decided that I was going to try to ease myself into it. I didn't want to become overwhelmed because I do have a history of anxiety and depression. And so I was like, I just need to take this one day at a time and just kind of ease myself into it. And that's the thing I love about you and this community is it's very accepting. You know, there's not a one size fits all keto. And the second anyone would say anything like you have to do it this way, I just run in the opposite direction. Yes. (laughs) But yeah, for sure. So yeah, I did. So for the first like week or two, I did keto. I just eased myself into it. I slowly took out the carbs and um, and up my fat, which is a very interesting thing because, you know, I grew up on the standard American diet, you know, low fat, eat all the sugar and the carbs and you'll be fine. And hey, we didn't know any better. But yeah, so I guess... I'll be honest, you know, a lot of people talk about keto flu. I think I maybe had symptoms of keto flu for maybe less than 24 hours. And, you know, I think it was probably a couple of days in that I just, I was really feeling the benefits. You know, I, f- I just felt better. You know, my mind felt clear. It's like my mind was on, f- like on fire. I don't want to say fire, but like rapid fire. Like it, I could think faster and I could react faster. And, you know, I had more motivation at work and all these things. And, so I want to say my adaptation phase didn't take too long in terms of like, you know, the awful keto flu that everyone talks about. I would say it probably took me almost two months to really feel like all of the benefits of keto. But I, I also I don't test for right now. I kind of wanted to give myself a full year before I do any of like the blood strips or anything like that just because just for fear of it being triggering you know, because I, I did experience some binge eating issues. And I just kind of want to like, really know I'm in it to win it. And you know, I'm in a good place where I feel comfortable doing that. So for now, I don't do that. But I definitely feel like I'm reaping the benefits of keto after being on it for about seven months so far. That's awesome. That's so good. I'm so happy for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> More on my interview with Tiffany Marr after this message from one of our podcast partners. The show is partnered up with Paleo Valley, the makers of the only 100% grass-fed and finished fermented beef stick. Each stick contains 1 billion probiotic CFUs, and we all know how important fermented foods are to the health of our gut and the strength of our immune system, as well as boosting overall energy. Chowing down on Paleo Valley's fermented beef sticks provides your body with all of the beneficial bacteria it loves in one convenient little stick. Their gut-friendly sticks are gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, freaky chemical, additive dye, and preservative-free, as well as being 100% free from carbs and sugar, and made with the highest quality ingredients. Exclusive to listeners of the show, you can receive an instant savings of 20% off Paleo Valley fermented beef stick snacks by going to paleovalley.com slash keto. And if your jaw is tired just thinking about beef jerky, I gotta tell you that these tasty treats are not tough at all, but moist. 
sliced with a little snap. Again, that's paleovalley.com slash keto for an instant 20% off savings. And if you're unsure of the link, simply check out the show notes of today's episode to get all of the details. So because you don't have a thyroid, do you feel like because you don't have a thyroid, you experience keto a little bit differently from what you've read online or anything? Like, can you attribute anything that you experienced to the fact that you don't have a thyroid? Or was it pretty much like from what you've read, everyone kind of experiences the same thing that you did? I would say it, it might be similar. I do think that for me personally, I have to be very careful about the carbs I have throughout my day, whether that be I'm on day shift or night shift only because I've noticed that if I try to add in more carbs throughout the day, I start to really feel those hypothyroid, those symptoms. I experienced it actually a week or two ago where I don't even know if I had like a sweet potato or a white potato. I can't, I wish I had no journaled it, but you know, I was eating it and I felt fine. And then it's almost like I could slowly feel those symptoms and side effects creeping in within like an hour. So what I usually try to do, you know, some people can eat carbs throughout the day. My carbs come mostly from vegetables during the day. So spinach and kale and I, I'm obsessed with green peppers. I could <laughs> eat those like all day long for some reason. Cucumbers, trying to think of what else. Um, those are kind of my staples. But And then if I want to, I might do a little bit more of carbs at night before I go to bed, just depending on my mood and, you know, if, uh, if I've worked out or anything like that. But I'd say for the most part, from what I've read, it's very similar experiences. I will say that not having a thyroid definitely affects my everyday life in general, you know, and it probably does affect my keto as well. And that's just because I feel as though with no thyroid, I'm a little, I feel as though I'm probably a little bit more sensitive than other people, which is great being in tune with your body. It's also kind of a, it's a gift and a curse, you know? So but I guess from what I've read and seen, I would, I would say it's probably pretty similar. I do think I need to be a little bit more cautious about the carbs and, you know, making sure I'm getting my electrolytes and, and supplements and stuff like that. So I don't know if that was helpful or not. <laughs> yeah, totally it was. And you mentioned being mindful of the carbs. It sounds like you do a carb up practice, yes? Yeah, so I don't do it, I don't know, like a schedule per se when it comes to carb ups. You know, sometimes, I don't know if you experienced this, I think you've mentioned it before, where you just know that you need one. You know, you feel like, I just want to sleep a little bit better, you know, I just, I'm cranky, you know, and I mean, I would say I probably, I don't I think the last carb up I did was maybe like a couple of weeks ago. And it's nothing any, it's really nothing crazy, to be honest. It's probably like a whole bunch of vegetables and some fruit. You know, if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling sassy, I might add some peanut butter to my apple. You oh, know, dangerous. Um, well, I know. <laughs> or don't tell the keto police. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and I'll be honest, you know, sometimes I do popcorn with coconut oil on it. Not a whole lot, but just to give it a little bit of something in it. But I, I don't like to do those very often. I do feel like I sleep better, but I also, I do try to keep up with my supplements like magnesium helps me sleep too. And I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit about supplements in a little while, but um, yeah, I do carb ups every now and then. It's not, I'm not on a schedule. I do it kind of, you know, whatever suits my mood. Um, I really just try to be in tune with my body, which is something I've learned through keto actually. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing how much more in tune I am with my body now on keto than I was before. Like I thought I had a pretty good handle before, but this is like, like you were saying, it's, it's a blessing, but it can also be a curse because sometimes ugh. I had no clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. I had no clue. And I think people, you know, that eat, you know, the standard American diet, they're like, I feel fine. I'm like, I promise you, if you take certain things out, even if you don't do keto, if you just take soda out yeah. or you just lessen your carbs a little bit, you know, and or just pick, you know, better carbs like a sweet potato. And I know some people don't, you know, don't react to white potatoes or I know some people that like rice and it does, they don't react or anything like that. You know, if you just slowly kind of take out the garbage, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I never knew that. 
I thought I felt great, but really I felt awful. <laughs> yeah, completely. I couldn't go back there for sure. Like I just I couldn't can't. even. I just it's can't. not an option. <laughs> Let's chat a little bit more about the foods that you choose. Are there any foods that you avoid because of um, the fact that you don't have a thyroid or specifically foods that you choose because of your thyroid condition or? I would say I try to limit heavy gluten amount, which I think a lot of people on keto try to do. I try to also avoid a lot of alcohol. And that's just, I mean, a glass of wine every now and then is perfectly fine. But I know if, you know, if I have alcohol, sometimes, you know, not even a whole lot, I'll just wake up the next morning going, Oh, why did I do that? You know, it's like those those body cramps. And, you know, it's it's the mental fog. And I'm sure it's the sugar and the alcohol. But it's just brutal. I try to limit dairy as much as possible just because it's, you know, it is inflammatory. I do have it. I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes I put some cheese on my salad, but I don't go hog wild. You know, I really try to get my fats from olive oil and coconut oil and avocado oil and, and, and things of that nature. Awesome. And you mentioned supplements a little bit ago. I'd love to chat with you about your favorite supplements and also the medication that you're on because you don't have a thyroid. So I'm currently in the works of um, making appointments with some holistic nutritionists to kind of explore the world outside of my current medication, which is Synthroid. That is what they put you on if you've had thyroid cancer. That is their go-to. That is what they do. And just through research of my own the last couple of months, you know, it's it's only masking It's like a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. I know that's a terrible comparison, but there's a lot of other things that they could be doing to help me with with my thyroid. You know, just because I'll have a thyroid, you know, there are certain things that I could be taking to kind of making sure my body is getting what it really, truly needs. Because sometimes I feel like my body's a pick-your-own-adventure every day. So some days I'm great, some days I feel awful, and some days it's in between. And, you know, keto has definitely helped that. And um, some of the supplements, that I take also help that as well. So I do take magnesium. It helps me sleep. It also helps with um, constipation. That is a big issue with people with hypothyroidism. I also take a probiotic. I think everyone should, you know, look into getting good good probiotic, um, especially if you're hypothyroid. I personally currently use the Wolf Clinic Royal Flora. Yeah, it's great. Hey. Yeah, it's so awesome. I mean, I took that for two, I think a week and a half, two weeks and felt a huge difference. You know, I was I was less bloated. (laughs) I felt a little bit more regular and things like that. So I, I'm a big fan of it. You know, I might change at one point to a different one. But for right now, that's, that's definitely something I like to keep in my uh, supplement arsenal. And something else that I recommend, I don't have this problem anymore because my job is primarily outside, but I would say a vitamin D supplement would be good for people, especially if you have a desk job and you're inside all day long. Before I got into uh, wastewater, which is my career now, you know, I was in, a, in an office and my vitamin D tanked. I was vitamin D deficient and I had to go on supplement and that helped my thyroid at the time when I had it. So I do recommend that. And then the other thing that I recently started trying, probably like, I want to say like a month or two ago, is Equip Foods, um, their protein powder and their collagen. I think you use the collagen, don't you? Sure do. Oh, yeah, girl. (laughs) (laughs) I like to use the, it's the prime protein, I guess, their their protein powder. Usually after I work out, I put in some cashew milk, I do the protein powder, I put some collagen in, I mix it up and I drink it and it's delicious and I feel fantastic. It's just like a good like little tool to have, you know, just in case you need it. And it tastes great, which is awesome. I'm not a big fan of collagen in my coffee. I know a lot of people do that. And if you do, rock on with your bad self. For me, I just, I can tell the texture and the taste, even if it's unflavored. I know that sounds crazy. Wow. But I can, yeah, it's weird. Like, it's it's almost as if, even if I don't do any, I don't do anything crazy in my coffee. That's the thing. I do coffee and MCT oil, and I'm a happy camper. But if I put the collagen in, even a half scoop, it's I can it's it, to me there's a different taste to it. Now I'm not sure if my taste buds are sensitive because of having no thyroid. I don't know if that's a thing, but it definitely tastes different to me. And also 
I noticed that if I have that protein with my coffee in the morning, I do notice a difference in terms of energy level. Like I need to start my day off with a good amount of fat and little protein and little carbs to kind of set my day up to, you know, rock and roll throughout the whole day. Mm, That's awesome. That's totally awesome. Have you looked into red light therapy and photobiomodulation for your thyroid? thyroid stuff? No, I haven't. You know, I have read research about like the sauna, you know, sitting in the sauna, which is good for for you, I guess. And I do sit in that when I'm in the gym. But no, I haven't heard of that. It's something I'm trying out. I got a a thing called a juve light. And I had to get rid of my sauna space because it wouldn't fit in our 200 square foot home. And I was (laughs) really frustrated and really missing it. And then one of our listeners recommended juve. I chatted with them. I got one. And I've been using it to try to stimulate hormone, rather stimulate my thyroid healing so that I can actually get off the meds like for good. (laughs) And I still have to go for my first test, but I'm feeling like even at 60 milligrams with my desiccated thyroid, because like you, I was like, I'm not getting near that Synthroid stuff. I'm not doing it. So I take desiccated and I'm finding even at 60 milligrams, which is where I go when I'm not on tour. When I'm on tour, it's like 120. I'm a total stress case. My thyroid is like screaming (laughs) at me. But um, even 60 is getting too high for me. I can just feel like I'm high like you know that feeling is like just I get really jittery grumpy I can't sleep I'm tossing and turning I get really moody um yep (laughs) I I'm not hungry at all my appetite completely goes away so these are the signs that I'm getting by using this light so I think I'm even going to lower my dose so I'm still playing around with it I just wondered if you had heard of it it's looking like because it focuses primarily just on the red light therapy it might even be more powerful than the sauna space and you only have to sit in front of it for like five minutes a day which is way easier too so yeah just something to think of and anyone listening to um, once I know for sure that it's like the best thing ever I'll share it but if you're totally curious you can check out Ju I think it's J-O-O-V-V. I'll include a link in the show notes anyway, so you can check it out. But I was just curious if you had heard of it. I haven't, but you know, now, now I'm curious. So I can't wait to hear more from you about that if it's if it's really helping. Because, I mean, I love sitting in the sauna at the gym. You know, I usually sit in there like probably like five, ten minutes. And I do feel better. But if that's something I can keep at home, that would be even better. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm looking at it right now. It's probably, I don't know, eight inches wide by... I don't know, like maybe 60 inches tall and that's it. And it just hangs on a door. It's so easy. (laughs) That's much easier than your pocket. (laughs) Oh yeah. There was no, there just wasn't a way we, we actually tried to plan to bring it with us. And I'm like, where are we going to put this? It was just too much of a headache. So (laughs) I ended up providing it to a very, very nice individual who now is hopefully using it every day. But yeah, just something to think of too. I'm, I'm always trying to look for better things because like you said, although the supplementation is super important and especially when it comes to the fact that you don't have a thyroid, you'll have to take, you know, hormone for the rest of your life. But is there a better way? Are there other things that you can do to like support that? So it's more of a holistic approach. I'm really excited to see what you learn about it. Yeah, that and that's something, you know, now that I've been doing keto for about seven months, I really feel like I'm in a good place to start experimenting. And I think that's something important that everyone should note, you know, when you're doing keto, if you're only a month into it, I mean, I wouldn't go crazy with experimenting with different things. Really get into keto for a good couple months. And I mean, that's just my personal opinion, but, you know, really get into keto for a couple months and then start playing around with different things. Because obviously me not having a thyroid, I wasn't going to go crazy for starting keto with, you know, carb ups and protein ups and you know, let's try this medication and let's do this. I really wanted to kind of set a foundation of being on keto just to know this is how I feel when I'm really focusing on getting this high fats. And, you know, now let's play with, let's look at a new, you know, let's talk to a nutritionist, go from a holistic approach. And so, yeah, I'm definitely excited. I'm gonna have to look up that, that, um, the red light thing. That sounds really cool. Yeah, cool. Awesome. And I do have a question. We chatted a little bit about how we feel when we are, um, hyperthyroid, if we've taken too much medication, I'd love to chat with you a little bit about the symptoms you were experiencing when you went to your doctor and thought that there was something wrong and you were diagnosed with thyroid cancer, kind of what that felt like and the symptoms you had with that? 
Oh, sure. So hypothyroidism, I think a lot of the listeners understand what it's like. You know, you're getting the weight gain, you're having a hard time losing it, you have very little energy, you might be depressed, um, constipation, ability to focus on anything except words. That was a big thing for me. Muscle aches, heart palpitations, you know, the list goes on and on. And I definitely think that, you know, having known that, when it was a month or two when it, before my yearly appointment, I started to really feel those symptoms. And it's like nothing I did could make it better. I will say that, you know, those symptoms were very similar. The thyroid cancer symptoms are very similar to hypothyroidism, but exponentially worse. I'm talking about weight gain. And it was like I could lose a certain amount. I, I don't think the pounds matter, but, you know, you, I would lose it. And then gain it all back two weeks later, even though I was doing the exact same thing. I mean, it wasn't changing anything. And I remember being very overwhelmed and upset because at the time I had just started my new job that I'm at now in June of 2015. And then, you know, it just seemed like the closer I got to my appointment it was a couple months later in November. And it was like I was training with my crew and they were fantastic and they were so helpful. And I remember there were a couple times I distinctly remember them saying, OK, Tiffany, like you're totally ready. You can go off and do it by yourself. This is how you fix this. This is how you do this. I, OK, great. You know, one coworker would tell me that and I would leave. And Leanne, I'm not joking. Two minutes later, I couldn't remember anything he said. And like, I'm trying not to be upset because like that was really overwhelming for me because, you know, when I was younger, I had great a great memory. I could remember everything, you know, and even you know, before I got cancer, you know, I could still remember like silly little facts about people I met, you know, at some some birthday party or some wedding, you know, I could still remember those silly little things. And it's like, I couldn't even remember something so simple. And um, that was really hard for me because, you know, one crew member would tell me how to do it. And I would call a different crew member to say, hey, how do you do this again? And he would tell me and then you know, I would just break down and cry because it's like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I remember anything? And, you know, I started carrying around a little notepad and they would tell me how to do something. And it could be the simplest thing, you know, press this button, then do this kind of stuff. And I would still lean and have to write it down because I couldn't remember a few minutes later after they told me. And that's when I knew something was wrong. You know, yeah, I had a little bit of memory loss, but it wasn't that bad. And I think the other thing was... My depression and anxiety really took a hit. It was, you know, it runs in our, it runs in my family, as I'm sure with a lot of people that are listening, but it got so badly in that I was like paralyzed by my depression and my anxiety. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to leave the house. I was sleeping all the time. I mean, I would, I would sleep 16 hours, get up, let my dog out, go take a nap, get up, let her out, feed her, and then go to bed. You know, like that's not good. You know, sometimes you need those days where you sleep in and you don't do a whole lot and that's fine. But it's like I couldn't get enough sleep. That's all I could do. I didn't have I was like slogging through work. I felt like my whole body was just so heavy, you know, like I was weighted down. And then my depression got so bad. It was so bad. I was having what I refer to as bad thoughts. I really just didn't want to to live anymore. And that's not something I talk about a lot because I don't want to worry anyone. I've come far from that now. I'm doing a lot better when it comes to those things. But at the time, like, I was so depressed. Nothing was making me feel better. I was like, this is it. I'm done. I can't do this life anymore. I want to be done. I don't want to be here anymore. And that's when I realized there's something wrong with me. This isn't normal. And then... The last thing that was pretty major was I was having hallucinations. And I know that's a very extreme symptom. That's not something that's very common. I looked it up, but if your thyroid takes such a hit, your hormones take such a hit, this is an extreme case. This isn't everybody. So no one out there panic. But I was having hallucinations. I was on the verge of having a, a psychotic break. And when I went in and told my doctor this, she's like, this isn't okay. You're not okay. Sure enough. There was the proof in all of my testing when she did that. So, but like I said, those are very extreme symptoms. You could have thyroid cancer and just have all the symptoms of hypothyroidism, you know, like the usual things like the weight gain and, and um, the constipation and word regulation, re word regulation and uh, brain fog. So yeah, it was definitely, it was definitely very overwhelming.
Wow. I can't even begin to understand how you moved past that. And it makes sense that, you know, when you went to the doctor and you, you, you had to take that time <laughs> to just take a break. Um, I think that brings a lot more perspective to it that you just weren't mentally able to take on anything. <laughs> there was no way. I mean, I even told my mom and my dad, you know, when I, I said, you know, I, I need to go into the doctor, they they found something. And my mom was like, I thought your appointment was in November. And I said it was. And she kind of she gave me that mom look. Yeah. And I when I went in, and I called them, she's like, I knew. I knew. And she goes, Tiffany, it's okay. I know you weren't ready back then, but you're ready now. And I I will attribute the fact that I got through all of those very dark days because of my family, because of my stepmom and dad, because of my sister, because of my friends um, and my, my other family. They, they really got me through. And as stubborn as I am, as much as I try to push them away, they refused. They said, nope, you're not pushing us away. We're going to help you through this. You're not going to face us alone. That's amazing that they were there to support you. More on my interview with Tiffany Marr after this message from one of our podcast partners. I love being Canadian, the home of the true north strong and free, but gosh, am I jealous that y'all in the U.S. get access to Thrive Market. For all of my pals south of the border, my friends at Thrive Market are offering you 35% off your first box of groceries plus free shipping and a 30-day trial. Imagine spending only $9.95 as opposed to the $20.99 on raw cacao powder or $7.45 on avocado oil mayo as opposed to $13.99 on other online shopping sites. So on top of their everyday wholesale prices, the extra 35% off your first box of groceries plus free shipping is going to transform a regular $100 grocery run into a $50 to $75 Thrive Market order. For the same amount of things, go to thrivemarket.com HP to get your instant 35% off. This offer is available to new Thrive Market customers only. Unsure of the link? Simply check out the show notes of today's episode to get all of the details. Do you feel like you had the support you needed to push through a difficult period? And if so, you know, if somebody's listening who maybe has a friend or family member who's going through a similar thing that you are, is there anything that they could do to help? It's really hard because Here's the thing. The type of thyroid cancer that I was diagnosed with is not necessarily life threatening in itself. It's life altering. And that's something that I tried to remind myself, but it was still like these awful symptoms I was having. You know, if you have someone that's going through something similar, whether that be the thyroid cancer or depression or anxiety, it's really important to not minimize their feelings and their emotions. Because when someone says, I'm upset, don't say, oh, you're fine, get over it. That's not actually helping the, the issue. That's only gonna make them feel worse. They're gonna feel they're gonna probably feel guilty for that. So I would say always be open to having a conversation. You might not have all the answers. You might say, I don't understand what you're going through, but if you if you need me, I'm here for you one hundred percent. And you know, sometimes someone just needs to sit down and cry or someone just needs to sit down and scream and not necessarily at you, but just to let those emotions out because life is wonderful, but life is also kind of scary. It's a beautiful mess. And, you know, we need the support of others, even if they don't have all the right answers or have any answers, just to know that you're not alone is probably the most important thing. Yeah, I totally agree. And just giving them, it sounds like holding that space for them mm -hmm. and allowing them to just do what they need to do and them knowing that you're there to support them. Mm -hmm. Cool. For sure. Amazing. And kind of in the same line, I'm sure there are a lot of women listening that maybe are frustrated with the support of their doctors or lack thereof. Are there any tips that you have for working with medical professionals and, you know, getting what you want or finding what you want? It sounds like you're now on a new path of finding medical professionals that can help you and provide alternative treatment, you know, suggestions. Do you have any tips for people that are in that same boat of just feeling frustrated with their medical care? I think it's really important that everyone out there, you need to be your own advocate. You need to 
not just trust what they're telling you. You need to, there's this beautiful thing called Google and you can go down the rabbit hole, but you need to be your own advocate. You need to do your own research. And if you really feel like your doctor's not listening to you, if you say, listen, like I feel this way, I want this test or this test. You know, I know some doctors and endocrinologists are like, you're fine. I'm not going to run that test. Well, if they're not going to do that for you when you're asking, find another doctor. And honestly, if I knew at 18, what I know now at 28, my life would be different. You know, I would have been an advocate for myself. I would have fought for, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want this radioactive iodine. I'm 18. I don't need to be killing off my thyroid. Like I want to find a better way. But I was 18. I didn't know. But so if you're out there listening and you're frustrated, it's oh, one, it's okay to be frustrated. And that's good. That, that means you, you care and you want to find the best you know, way for you to heal your body and heal your hormones, go look for a different doctor, you know, go the holistic approach. So not all doctors are bad, but you need to also do your own research and not just, you know, put all your faith in what they're telling you. Because unfortunately, a lot of doctors and endocrinologists are, you know, they're entrenched in this old way of thinking um, when it comes to the thyroid. And I think it's important that we just don't take what they say at face value. We need to go out and, and do our own do our own research. Mm-hmm. Said like a champ. I totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> and my last question for you, just to kind of wrap things up, I always like to ask my keto experience guests, what do you feel is missing in the keto space specifically for women? I think all of us can agree that there needs to be way more research out there all over scattered through the internet on the news all this research about how the keto diet can really help women live fulfilling lives you know whether you've got pcos or you um i know you had an experience with an amenorrhea or thyroid um, dysregulation anything like that there needs to be more research just plastered throughout the entire internet and and the tv but i also think that there's There's a lot of issues I see now with compassion and it bothers me because while I have found a a fantastic, wonderful, amazing group of women, mainly through Instagram on keto, I know, and some people are paleo and that's fine. We're very supportive of each other, but then you've got people that, you know, there's just, people need to be more compassionate for others. I feel like there's just too much people tearing other people down and that's not, that's not helpful. That's not productive. There is no one size fits all. Let me say that again. There is no one size fits all of keto. My keto is different than Leanne's keto, which is different than my sister's diet or, you know, the next person's way of keto. But I'm not going to trash anyone that does it differently. And they're not going to, if they're in my, your vibe attracts your tribe. So the people that I hang with are going to say you're doing it wrong. And people out there that, you know, bash other people. It's just, it's very unfortunate. I just think we need to be compassionate towards each other and also compassionate towards ourselves. Wonderful. I couldn't agree with you more. Well said. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show today, Tiffany. I can't believe how fast time flies when you're having fun. (laughs) And it went so, so fast. I just... It's crazy because I'm just sitting here and I just glanced at the time and realized, oh, wow, like that went so fast. (laughs) I know. I know. It's crazy. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. The show notes and full transcript for today's episode can be found at healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E61. The transcript is added to the post about three to five days following the initial air date of this episode. And thanks again, Tiffany, for coming on and sharing your wisdom and your experience. I know it's going to benefit a lot of listeners today. Thank you so much, Leanne. I really appreciate it. And that does it for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Thanks for listening in. You can follow me on Instagram by searching Healthful Pursuit, where you'll find daily keto eats and other fun things. And check out all of my keto supportive programs, bundles, guides, and other cool things over at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash shop. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.